All right. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Again, my name is Dr. Nick Kramer. I am the principal of EP Online, and we are excited to spend some time this evening uh, talking about our middle school program and how to register for courses for next year. Uh, as always, though, we like to start with a reminder of what we're all about in Eden Prairie Schools. The mission of Eden Prairie Schools is to inspire each student to learn continuously so they're empowered to reach personal fulfillment and contribute purposefully to our ever-changing world. And we truly mean every word of that mission statement, especially the word each. We really try to personalize learning for every student that we have. Um, tonight, there might be a variety of different people that are listening to this webinar. Um, we know we have a number of our current families um, who are tuning in to learn specifically about the logistics of how to register for courses for next year. But we also know we have some individuals um, who maybe are checking out EP Online for the first time um, and are potentially interested in enrolling in our school next year. And so we want to let you know um, that we do have an entirely separate webinar on our website that kind of tells you more about what our school is about. Um, and if you are interested in enrolling, um, the information that you see on the screen right now, um, the website or email or phone number will put you in touch with our Welcome Center and they'd be happy to walk you through that process. Um, but without further ado, we want to share a little bit about um, who we are as EP Online. This year we have 620 students from kindergarten through 12th grade and pretty evenly distributed about 40 to 50 students per grade level. So that amounts to about two sections um, per grade level uh, of the various courses we offer. Um, we're very geographically diverse as well. We've got students from all over the state of Minnesota uh, tuning in for instruction with us each day. Um, about 35% of our kids are, are local here in Eden Prairie. Um, another 39% come from the greater Twin City metro area. And uh, the other 26% come from greater Minnesota and really every stretch of the state. Um, racially, we're also very diverse, um, and we believe that diversity is a strength of ours. Um, we have a wide variety of students that represent the wide variety of, of, of people we have across the country. And so um, we're, we're excited for the opportunity that that gives students to get to know students from other cultures and backgrounds. Uh, and finally, we're also extremely proud of our academic success record. Um, as you can see, um, Eden Prairie Online um, has a significantly higher number of students that meet or exceed state standards than what we we typically see across um, state schools in Minnesota. And so with that said, we want to talk to you tonight about our middle school program. Um, our online middle school program, students will be taking four courses per semester next year. And that's actually a change uh, for those of us uh, that are currently have a student in our middle school program. Um, we are moving to the same block schedule that our high school offers. And uh, by making that change, um, we're able to kind of do two things simultaneously. Um, one, some feedback we heard from students and families this year is that allows our students to be able to focus a little bit more um, so that they're only taking four courses at a time instead of eight. Uh, and two, it allows us for, for some of our eighth graders who are ready to start to take high school level courses uh, to be able to do that because it'll be on the same schedule um, that our high school online is offering. Um, so we'll are on a block schedule next year. Um, our students are served in our middle school through a blended model of both some synchronous learning from teachers live and some self-paced learning on their own um, anytime, anywhere. Um, all of our students are provided with an iPad um, to conduct their work, um, and that includes any students that are open enrolled from across the state. And finally, um, just like any brick and mortar school you might have, um, we're proud to be able to support our middle schoolers with a guidance counselor, with uh, special education teachers, with English language learner specialists, with gifted specialists, and with social workers. And so we really, uh, again, will meet students where they are and, and provide all of the services that you'd come to expect with any school. Um, our classes are taught by um, exceptional Eden Prairie School teachers. And, and again, that's why I think you see the academic gains that we have. It, it really is our faculty and we are able to attract the, the best teachers across the state to, to work for us. Um, students will take, and, and in a minute, we'll show you some visuals that help make this uh, a little bit clearer, but students take uh, two synchronous uh, sessions a, a week for each of their courses. Um, those sessions are recorded if a student isn't able to, to make it at, at all times. Um, we know that one of the attractions of an online school is that it provides families with some flexibility in how they pace out their days. 
Um, but those those synchronous sessions are opportunities for an entire class to come together with the teacher to learn um, new instruction and to get support. Um, one of the things we're adding for next year uh, are workshops on the other two days of the week, Monday through Thursday, um, when the course is not meeting as a whole class. And those workshop slots are a little bit more informal in nature. They're an opportunity for kids to drop in for support. Uh, they're not necessarily new learning, but it's a chance for if a student is working independently and they're getting stuck on something, that their teacher is available during a designated time every day. Um, for, for that extra help or vice versa. It might be an opportunity where a teacher's reaching out and saying, hey, I'd love for this small group to come work with me during this set amount of time or, or let's do a project together or work on an assessment together. Uh, and so we're excited to be able to add even more synchronicity into our schedule for next year. Um, we do offer honors um, courses in English, social studies and science. Um, and we also offer an accelerated math option where um, students can take math at a higher grade level, including um, high school level math courses, if appropriate. Uh, finally, uh, we pride ourselves on frequent communication with our families. And so um, part of our model is the opportunity for families to have periodic um, conferences with our teachers. Uh, and we always welcome, you know, just informal, um, whether it's a call, whether it's hopping on a Zoom like this, um, whether it's email, but always keeping you posted about how your students are, are progressing in their learning. Um, one more really um, exciting thing that we're adding for next year based on feedback we've gotten from families this year is the addition of a connections um, class. And so we'll show you where this will fit in the schedule here in just a minute. But this connections class is going to be an opportunity for students to start their day every day. Um, with a faculty advisor and with a core group of peers um, that they will loop with every year that they're with Eden Prairie Online. So if you're an upcoming sixth grader next year, you'll have a new group of, of connections group of, of peers and a faculty member that you'll get to meet. And you'll stay with that group in seventh grade and eighth grade and even into high school. And so the purpose of this connections course is to really focus on social connection, uh, to give our students, even though they may be geographically all over the state, a chance to get to know other students in our online school uh, and get to form positive relationships with them. It'll also give us a chance um, to do some academic advising with students um, during you know, times like now when, when we're registering for courses um, and to be able to provide consistent communication from across our school. So those are some of the, the features of our programming that we're excited about. And now we'll give you kind of a deeper dive in what that looks like. So again, we're on a block schedule. And so we'll show you here in just a minute, sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade separately. Um, but each of them are gonna have some similar um, features. You'll see we have that connections advisory that will start the day uh, and that will be featured throughout the year. Um, and then students will have four different courses that they're focusing on at a time. Um, and those four courses are going to be blocked out throughout the day. So you can see in sixth grade, um, students will be in an English language arts course for three quarters out of the year. Um, and a math course, um, either math six or pre-algebra, if they're on that accelerated track for three quarters out of the year. And those three quarters um, actually are an extended amount of time in literacy um, and in numeracy because we know those skills are so important for uh, postgraduate success. Um, that fourth quarter, um, you'll see that that English course will transition into one of two different fine art offerings that students will have. Uh, and the topic for that fine art course will shift from year to year and, and will focus various media arts courses such as um, here, the examination of illustrated texts, but in future grade levels, you'll see theater studies, film studies, things like that. Um, we let students um, vote on some of the topics they're interested in learning about, and we build courses around their interests. Um, on the fourth quarter of that math track, um, students will engage in a technology course. And again, we also solicit student feedback on what the most important topics would be, but this would be things like keyboarding, computer applications, coding, um, topics of that nature. You can see then in the other blocks throughout the year, students will take a earth and space science course in sixth grade and a Minnesota studies course for social studies in sixth grade. Um, students will also take a physical education and health course that's tailored to sixth grade. And finally, um, in their other fine art slot, students will have a choice between taking a visual art course, like drawing and painting or photography, things of that nature, um, or a vocal music course. 
um, or an instrumental music course. And I'll talk a little bit later in the presentation about what some of those instrumental options are. So that's our sixth grade schedule. When you look at our seventh grade schedule, again, you'll see a very similar design. Um, again, some of the topics will shift when they get to those fine art offerings or those technology offerings. Um, our seventh graders that are on that accelerated math track will have the ability to move on to algebra one. Um, and, um, and then our science and social studies courses shift in seventh grade to be focused on life science and on US studies respectively. Um, again, students get that same choice of a fine art um, option um, and a tailor-made physical education and health course. And then finally, in eighth grade, um, we see a slight transition here in that um, our math course in eighth grade will become a normal two, two quarter block course um, because these are where students are able to start taking high school credit courses. And these follow um, the same format that our high school courses take. So algebra one or geometry. Um, during the other half of the year, students will then start their first high school um, track world language course. And we offer three different um, languages, Spanish one, French one, or Chinese one. And again, students will be able to continue that language that they choose into their high school studies. Um, science becomes physical science in eighth grade and social studies becomes world studies. So their world has gotten bigger from sixth, uh, seventh and eighth grade. And, and again, um, the same um, choice of fine art options and physical education and health options in eighth grade. Um, so that gives you a sense of kind of at, at a year's glance, you know, what does programming look like? Um, when we drill down to look at more like what does a, a typical week in the life of an EPO middle schooler look like? Um, this slide hopefully kind of shows you um, what, that, what, what that will be. Um, so that connections course that we talk about will be early in the morning, but not, not too early. It gives kids a little chance to sleep in a bit and get ready for the day. But that connections will be a way for everybody to kind of wake up, to get to know, um, again, connect with their faculty advisor, connect with their peers, and just kind of get situated for the day. Again, there's not academic content that's covered during that time, um, but it will be an opportunity for students to team build, uh, to build relationships with one another, and, and to make sure they're ready to roll. And then you can see kind of throughout the week um, what our consistent block times will be next year. So we'll have a 9 to 9.30 course, we'll have a 10.30 to 11 course, a 12.30 to 1 o'clock course, and a 2 to 2.30 course. Um, and throughout the week, that will alternate between um, the first and third day of the week, which typically will be on Monday and Wednesday, um, our uh, a full class meeting, like I talked about earlier. And that Tuesday and Thursday during that same block of time is when that is a workshop opportunity for students to come in and, and get extra support as needed. Um, you'll see that those class sessions are followed by independent work time for students. And for some students, they'll wanna follow this schedule to a T. Um, for others, they may decide, you know what? I'm gonna flex when I'm doing my independent work because I wanna do work in, in the evening or I wanna do work earlier in the morning. And that's the benefit of online school is you, you absolutely have the flexibility to do that. Another flexible option that students have is, is our Fridays. While we will have a connections period on Fridays, um, there are no course periods on Fridays because that gives students that big extended chunk of independent work time at the end of the week to finish any assignments that um, they maybe have not quite got around to earlier in the week. And it's a time for our teachers to engage in some targeted professional development and professional collaboration, um, as well as to do check-ins um, with families and, and have some individual appointment time set up on Fridays as, as needed. So hopefully that gives you a, a general sense of how that schedule will work. But again, we want to stress the flexibility of our programming. Um, our whole class meetings are recorded so that again, if a student is not able to make them on a given day, they can always go back and access that recording asynchronously um, so that they're able to, to keep up with their work um, and, and to participate again from um, whatever else they may be doing um, as, part of their, as part of their day. So a few other just points we want to touch on, and then we'll have an opportunity here shortly um, to take some questions um, from the audience. And so if you have questions, again, we encourage you to put those in the chat uh, about anything we've talked about so far or anything that we haven't talked about, right? Um, I want to drill down here a little bit further into our fine arts. So I mentioned earlier that these are some of the fine art options that students um, take. Um, in the state of Minnesota, um, middle schoolers are required to take at least two fine art um, courses a year. 
Um, and so, as I mentioned before, students will have a choice between if they want to take vocal music. And that vocal music course um, functions dually as both an individual sort of um, lessons uh, model where, where kids are learning you know how to practice their own voice skills but also there are ensemble options for students to practice you know coming together in a in a virtual choir like fashion um, the same model is true of our instrumental music so students um, are learning to practice um, an instrument individually um, we use a software program called smart music that allows them to you know differentiate wherever they are so whether they're a brand new um, learner uh, of an instrument or whether they've been doing it for a number of years. Um, we tailor make the curriculum to fit where they are. Um, and we do have opportunities though for kids to come together for some ensemble um, virtual music uh, making as well. And so uh, we offer instrumental music instruction in um, woodwinds, in brass, in percussion and in stringed orchestra instruments. And for next year, we're excited to also be able to start to add uh, piano and guitar to that mix as well. Um, in the visual arts category, students again have a variety of options that alternate um, year by year. So drawing and painting, digital media and photography are, are three of our most popular courses in that area. And then again, in the media arts, um, we have a variety of options that students will transition through throughout um, their experience in middle school. So whether that's studying theater or film and cinema or illustrated texts, um, or advertising, uh, those are the types of topics that kids will get exposure to in their media arts class at the end of the year. Um, also want to make sure that we know that all students in EP Online are eligible to participate in any sport club or extracurricular activity that's offered locally here at Central Middle School or Eden Prairie High School. Um, and so um, if you have a student that you know really wants to, again, uh, participate on a sports team or engage in a club activity or go to a school dance, um, all of those are options that are, are locally available for students that want um, to pursue that option. And at the high school level, all all of our courses are NCAA approved um, for student athletes. So, um, you know, at this point, uh, we're going to open it up for questions here in just a minute. But um, what we ask our current students to be able to do to register for courses for next year, and for any student who wants to enroll in EP Online, like I said, you'll have to go through our Welcome Center first to formally enroll, uh, and then you'll be able to utilize this registration form to actually pick the courses um, your student wants to take next year. Um, and so it's a very, it's a, it's a pretty straightforward Google form, and I believe Grace is going to put in the chat. Right Right now, for those of you online, um, the link to access this registration form, we will be emailing out um, this link um, for those that are watching the recording, and we'll also be putting that link on our website. But it'll walk you through, it'll ask you, you know, which grade level is your student registering for courses for, for next year, uh, and then it'll custom customize, you know, the questions they answer from there. Um, and, and again, many of our courses are, are sort of dictated in middle school, but um, questions around if you want to take an honors version, if you want to take an accelerated math course, um, and then in those fine art areas or world language areas where a student has a choice, it'll give you the option to make that selection. And we try as hard as we can to give students their first choice. Um, in those in those offerings. And so um, we'll be our guidance team will be compiling this information and we'll be using it to build out our master schedule and staff um, our courses for next year. And then in August, um, we let families know kind of exactly what that schedule will look like. Um, but you have through, um, you know, January 26th through February 17th to register. Obviously, if you enroll in our school, you know, at a later point than that in the year, we, we certainly will have you register as part of your enrollment process. But, you know, the more information we can get early on, um, the, the better programming that we can provide. And so with that said, um, you know, uh, we're going to open it up for questions right now, but I also want to let you know that if you have any additional questions that are, are more customized or, or more private, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, the information on the screen will take you to our, our EP online main office. And so whether you want to um, look at our website or whether you want to email or call us, um, we're happy to set up a time to chat with you individually um, and answer the questions that you have. But with that said, let's look at um, what we've got in the chat, Grace, and I think she's going to feed me some questions that are coming in. 
Yes. So thanks, Principal Kramer. For those of you who joined us later, please feel free to put your questions in the chat and I'll add them to my own personal queue as I kind of volley some over to Principal Kramer here. So the first one is, if, if my student wants to take high school classes while they're in middle school, which is a big benefit of the switch from middle school over to the block schedule, do they have the opportunity to get high school credit while they're doing that? How is that going to work? Yeah, that's a really, really good question. And honestly, it's something our, our district is exploring more in, in detail. Um, like you said, there, there are some different options that become easier in an online environment than they are in brick and mortar. Um, what we know definitively for next year is that um, students who take um, a, a geometry course as an eighth grader, um, that actually does count as high school credit for students. Um, and students who take um, a world language course in eighth grade, uh, so whether that's Spanish one, French one, one or, or Chinese one, uh, again, that opens up that high school pathway so that that's not a course they would have to retake at high school. They would be able to immediately transition into um, the level two course um, in those levels. Um, we're exploring, like I said before, to see if there are additional options, um, you know, especially in those uh, fine art areas that we could start to offer in the future. Um, but those are what are in the works for sure for next year. Great. A question came in about honors classes, accelerated classes, and gifted support. Are those new for this coming year, or do those exist now? Yeah, that's a really, really good question. Um, so the um, the all three of those are things that we have in place right now. We don't have a separate gifted program in middle school currently, and that is something we're looking to expand as we move forward. Um, but we do have um, honors um, enrichment modules in our in our existing courses. And if that is something that your student is interested in and hasn't um, tapped into yet, um, just reach out to your teacher and they can um, they can build that into the courses that they have right now. Um, without having to like change schedules or, or anything of that nature. Uh, and yeah, we also currently offer accelerated math courses right now. And so we, we do have a number of eighth graders that are taking uh, geometry, seventh graders that are taking algebra one, sixth graders that are taking pre-algebra. Um, and if that is something um, that is of interest to you, uh, again, kind of let us know. Uh, Mid-year, it's hard to make that shift, um, but there are certainly some options over the summer um, that could allow you to be ready to kind of make an accelerated jump um, for, the, for the upcoming school year. Looking ahead then to the coming year and registering for the coming year, how do you advise families make decisions about how many honors or advanced courses and which ones might be the right fit for their student? Yeah, you know, I mean, that's where I think our, our leadership team and in particular our EPO guidance counselor is, is a great asset, right? It gives you that opportunity um, to connect um, with, with a guidance counselor who knows, you know, kind of exactly what, what kids should be doing in terms of uh, achieving their college and career readiness goals, um, you know, down the road. Um, and that, um, that counselor can provide that individualized student and family support and really helping you to think through, um, you know, what, um, what's going to be best for your kid. Uh, and I mentioned the honors uh, enrichment modules a, a minute ago, but I mean, one of the nice things about the way our honors programs work is, is it's not an all or nothing principle, right? Like a student can decide on a, even on a unit by unit basis, whether they want to contract in for honors in those units. And so it provides a lot of flexibility for students to be able to, um, try it out. Uh, uh, and, and if we're finding that it's not working, right, to be able to easily um, switch that back up without, without causing, um, you know, a lot of headaches. And since we're sort of on this honors, gifted and talented track right now, for students who maybe are in Mosaic right now, which for those of you who aren't familiar with Eden Prairie Schools, Mosaic is a pullout, complete um, sort of immersion program almost for gifted and talented students in our brick and mortar elementary schools. So for students who are having that experience right now or maybe had it in the past, what are their options at CMS? Is there, how do you, or not CMS, <laughs> at, um, at EP online in the middle school? Something that's sort of equivalent to the continuation that they might see at CMS, which is central middle school. 
Yeah, that's a great question. So um, in, in the math realm, it'll actually work exactly the same way that it works at Central Middle School. So, um, you know, students that have been in the Mosaic program are already kind of started that accelerated track back in third grade. Um, and so those students um, are, you know, as sixth graders, they're ready to jump right into pre-algebra. Um, and, you know, the pre-algebra course that we offer is, is the same one that they would be getting in person. Um, at at CMS um, for our other courses, um, you know, there's a little bit of a difference in curriculum in some in some subject areas. Um, but again, our we offer that same sort of honors enrichment model that is the same type of curriculum work that is done at, at Central Middle School in offering um, what they call advanced sections um, in in those in in those same areas of science, English, and social studies. Could you talk a little bit about the curriculum that you use in EP online and specifically maybe which um, is there a specific track of curriculum that you use for certain classes? Yeah, you know, we actually there's a range um, and what we really try to do is to tailor make, you know, the curriculum that we think is going to best serve um, students in each subject area. So um, there are some courses I mentioned math is a great example. Our, our music courses is another example um, where we are we are literally using the exact same curriculum that is used in our brick and mortar schools and we've adapted it for a digital environment. Um, there are other subject areas um, where we did not find that that was going to be the the best first step, you know, as an online school, um, and where we are use, utilizing um, curriculum from a third party vendor um, called FlexPoint um, that is custom made for virtual learning. Um, and, you know, we review uh, and examine our curriculum every year. Um, and we, we, you know, we send out surveys to our, our families, our students and our teachers to get their opinions on that as well. Um, and in cases where we feel that there's a, a better fit, um, you know, we, we make the, we do the work over the summer to, to make that happen. And so um, a, a great example of that is as we move into next year, you know, one of the one of the areas we're looking to implement a new curriculum across the entire district is in our science. Um, and so in this, at the same time that our students in central middle school will be moving to a new science curriculum, we'll be digitizing that same curriculum for EP online. There was a specific question about Florida curriculum. Yeah, so um, I think there's a, maybe a little confusion out there, but um, you know, uh, FlexPoint, that third party vendor that I shared before, I, I think they originated out, out of Florida. Um, but they, you know, that is a curriculum that's actually nationalized and is used um, a, across um, a variety of online schools across the country. Um, but that I think that maybe is what you're referencing is, is that FlexPoint as a company was is based out of Florida. Um, and, um, and, and again, produces a curriculum for online schools um, across the country and, and actually even across the world. Great. If I currently have a student maybe in EP Online Elementary, or I don't have a student elementary or in EP Online at all yet, could you share a little bit about what the check-in process is with families when they move to a middle school level? How, how do parents connect with teachers and how frequently? Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, you know, without without going too much down at a <laughs> bird walk, right? Um, our elementary online program um, is one where a student really spends the bulk of their day with a designated homeroom teacher, right? So they get to know that teacher really well. They get to know that class really well. Um, we do have some specialists that come in for music and and phi ed and things like that. Um, but but you know, there's a really like homey environment, for lack of a better word, right? That is established. In our in our elementary program, and so um, you know, just like in person, right? When you when you transition to middle school, um, and you get to that point where now you're having uh, numerous teachers that you're working with, um, it can be a little daunting at times. And, and I think that's where the strength of having our new connections program next year is going to be really helpful because it will still provide uh, a, that similar nature of of what kids in K five have been used to in that homeroom setting, um, on a smaller scale, of course. But it'll give them that opportunity opportunity to have a, a at least a one key faculty member they really get to know well and, and a core group of, of students that they really get to know well and that they're starting their day with every day 
um, for that you know foundation. Um, and then from there, of course, that allows you then to really be able to be successful in the relationships you start to form with um, really eight different teachers across the school year. And again, under our block schedule next year, kids will really only be working with four teachers at a time. Um, but you will get to know those teachers really well because you'll have those, like I said, those synchronous whole class sessions twice a week um, with those with those teachers. And then you'll have that opportunity um, for additional support in those two workshop periods every week. And and then our online teachers are also very available, whether that's, um, you know, for a phone call, for, for email back and forth, for text messaging. I know every kid and family kind of likes to do it differently, um, but they're, they're very accessible throughout the year. And, and one of the things we're excited about too next year is that um, we'll be able to um, expand the number of full-time EP online teachers that we have um, so that their accessibility during the, the school days is even greater than it's been this year. Great. I will encourage everyone, please, if you have any final questions that you would like me to ask to Principal Kramer, please share them with me in the chat now. I have one more. Otherwise, if you, as we said before, if you have something that's maybe a little more personal, a little more specific to your child, when we stop recording, feel free to unmute yourself. If you'd like to share your camera, you're absolutely more than welcome to and chat with Principal Kramer directly. Otherwise, send us an email, call EP online. We'd be happy to answer your questions. So the question that I have here is, um, could you, where do I have that one written down? Oh, um, the workshops. Could you talk a little bit about the independent work that students do at, at the middle school level? Does that include recordings of teacher classes? Does that include, uh, I don't know, work in Schoology that they're doing by themselves? How does that look on a more individual level? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, Schoology is the learning management system that we utilize. And so um, students, you know, that's one of the first things we'll teach them at the beginning of the year if they're if they're new to our program is how to navigate that system, but it's very user friendly. Um, and so um, students will have, you know, a variety of modules throughout the week um, where they are learning, you know, whatever the course content is. And those modules um, are often um, multimodal in nature, right? So there'll be some things that students might be reading. There'll be some videos they might be watching. There may be some interactive exercises that they're engaging in and getting kind of instantaneous automated feedback on. Um, and so um, that is, is a way for them to be learning independently during those independent uh, times that we looked at earlier. Um, and that is supported and supplemented and structured by those whole class sessions that they're having twice a week as well. So the teacher's really introducing the content that kids are going to learn, providing additional instruction or examples or modeling um, so that it's really hitting home. And, and they're also checking in on, you know, are students understanding it and mastering it? And if not, right, what am I going to do responsively um, to, to, to better ensure that students get it, you know, when we come back together for that next meeting. Um, so in the same way that students are engaging in those, those learning modules um, throughout the week, there are also a variety of formative assessments that are built in as well. So students may take some quizzes, or they may be asked to, you know, write a paragraph and upload that or take a picture of something they're working on and upload that. And so they're getting feedback from their teachers throughout the week as well, um, as they're submitting that work. And the teachers are, are using uh, what they're learning as students are, are submitting that work to design, you know, the instruction that comes next. And I think, again, that's where that additional workshop time next year is going to be so impactful is it allows um, it allows even more of that responsiveness so that, you know, um, rather than having to pull the whole class together, if there is a small group of students or even an individual student um, that, you know, needs or wants some extra support at, on a certain topic, um, there's extra time to do that um, where the teacher is is available during um, during that normal block of time that the student is accustomed to engaging and learning in that subject area uh, and that they can um, really customize, you know, whatever that support is needed by that student. Thank you. I do not see any more questions in the chat. So hearing no more questions, we are going to wrap it up and end our recording. I want to thank everybody again for being here and especially for your flexibility. Thank you for jumping on this other link and joining us this evening. If you do have additional questions, please feel free to stick around. Principal Kramer will be around to answer your questions if you'd like to unmute yourself or 
show us your video, feel free. Otherwise, you've got all the information here to contact EP Online. So to those of us or those of you who are already here and already in EP Online, thanks for being a part of our community. And for those of you who hopefully will be in the future, we are looking forward to welcoming you. So thank you, everyone, and have a great evening.